meeting to order. The purpose of tonight's town meeting is uh, for me to ask for authorization to transfer property of the town of Weston and to sign quick claim deeds for parcels identified as parcels A to Austin Gans, parcel B to Stephen Cammy and Therese Cammy, and parcel C to uh, J. Chadwick and e I'm sorry, J. Chadwick and E. I. Chadwick. Um, all of which are shown on map number 2095, dated November 13, 1968. Uh, tonight is really just a little bit of housekeeping that should have happened many years ago. There are references going back to 1968 about the town transferring this land to those three homeowners, and it comes as a result of a, a subdivision uh, that uh, the town wished to create behind the property. These three homes are on a cul-de-sac. Once you cut through the cul-de-sac, you no longer need the emergency um, turnaround, the, the turnaround space for emergency vehicles. Um, so we no longer needed that space in the cul-de-sac. Uh, in a letter uh, that um, former first selectman George Cadera and Steve Patton from the Nature Conservancy sent in January 1994, it specifically talks about the town transferring this property to these three homeowners and uh, recommends to Kevin Reed of People's Bank that they sell them enough property to bring their property in compliance with the two-acre zoning in the town of Weston. These homeowners went through the process. They purchased the property through People's Bank. Uh, and then looking through our records, we realized that the town never kept up their end by transferring those little parcels of land. And I should mention they're all very minuscule uh, parcels of land, but something that's very important to the homeowners to bring them up to uh, two acres and in conformance with our zoning requirements. So today's vote is really about uh, writing something that should have happened uh, back in 1994. There are extensive minutes in planning and zoning talking about this transfer. However, we couldn't find any minutes going back to the Board of Selectmen. So the Board of Selectmen went through um, there are um, extensive uh, minutes, I'm sorry, uh, in the planning and zoning record, but there are no minutes from the Board of Selectmen from that time period. So the Board of Selectmen reviewed this request. We did ask planning and zoning uh, for an 824 referral. They did issue us a favorable report, and tonight it's up to the town meeting to make this approval. Uh, my only part in this meeting tonight is really to um, get the ball started with uh, um, nominating a moderator who will lead this meeting. Uh, I would like to make the suggestion that we nominate Woody Bliss, if there's someone here who is comfortable making that nomination. I nominate Woody Bliss. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Woody, the meeting is yours. Thank you, Gail. Good evening. I would like to uh, appoint a parliamentarian, and I'm going to appoint Sharon Shattuck. And I ask you to come and join me up here, please. Uh, by law, I have to read two sections of uh, state law, which explain the eligibility for, to vote and also the impact of fraudulent voting. And I apologize because these are a bit lengthy and quite boring. Uh, section 7.6 talks about eligibility to vote. At any town meeting, any person who is an elector of such town may vote, and any citizen of the age of 18 years or more who jointly or severally is liable to the town, district, or subdivision for taxes assessed against him on any assessment of not less than $1,000 on the last completed grand list of such town, uh, or who would be so liable if not entitled to an exemption, under subdivision 17, 19, 22, 23, 25, 4, 26 of the uh, state statute 12-81 may vote. With regard to fraudulent voting, section 93360, fraudulent voting, any person not legally qualified who fraudulently votes in any town meeting or any election in which he is not qualified to vote or any legally qualified person who in such election votes fraudulently more than once at the same election shall be fined not less than $300 nor more than $500 and shall be imprisoned not less than one year nor more than two years and shall be disenfranchised. Any person who votes or attempts to vote at any election or town meeting by assuming the name of another who is registered shall be fined $500 and be imprisoned one year and shall be disenfranchised. 
I would ask uh, any working press that's here tonight, I don't see any. Well, I don't see anybody who's not eligible to vote. I want to separate the non everybody's eligible to vote. I'd also note that uh, Judy DeVito is the clerk of this meeting and will take minutes and, and provide uh, that. There was a, there was a uh, notice of a meeting that was duly published in, in the local paper. Uh, and we could read that call, or I'd be happy to entertain a motion just to waive that call and insert the call of the meeting into the record of tonight's meeting. So, so if I could have a motion. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The call of the meeting will be entered into the record. Let me just go through the rules very quickly uh, for addressing the meeting. First, you need to be recognized by the moderator. We ask you to identify yourself by name and street. Uh, and I would note that only Western voters or their legal counsel or others who have specialized knowledge bearing on the issue at hand may address the meeting. Please keep your remarks brief and to the point and do not simply repeat what others have already said. You can, if you agree with them, you can just say, I agree with Mrs. Jones or Mr. Jones and move on. If, uh, if seven voters uh, disagree with the moderator's interpretation of a voice vote, then uh, we shall have a standing, a standing vote. And that challenge must be made immediately after the moderator makes a call and will result in an immediate counted, counted vote. Uh, all votes are going to be taken by voice unless there's a seven vote voter challenge. I'm not sure we have seven votes <laughs> to challenge the call. So that basically is it for the uh, rules. The only other thing that I mentioned is it, it probably will come up if there's a, a, a motion made to limit debate to oppose the time limit of the speakers, then uh, that requires a second and two thirds majority is not debate. So I would uh, ask the first selectman to present the motion. Be resolved that the Western Town Meeting authorized first selectman Yale Weinstein acting on behalf of the Town of Weston sign quick claim deeds for parcels identified as parcel A to Austin Gans, parcel B to Stephen County and Teresa County, and parcel C to J.B. Chadwick and A.B. E.L. Chadwick. All is shown on map number 2095, dated November 13, 1968, and recorded in the Western Manor. Is, is there a second to that motion? Is there any discussion of the motion? Yes, Mark. Would you please idea. identify yourself? Mark Wardenberg, Wilson Road. I Thank think you. it's a great idea. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we shall vote. All in favor of the uh, motion by First Select Woman Weinstein, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. The motion carries. I would entertain a motion to dissolve the meeting. Is there a second? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The meeting is dissolved. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Cheryl.